Travel with me, if you will, to the epistle of Paul to the Philippian church, Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, starting at the fifth verse, Philippians chapter 2, starting at the fifth verse. We celebrate this morning the presence of our sister, Sister Carla Quick, has been out for quite some time, but she's in the building. Amen. Good to see you with us on this morning. Reggie, good to see you too. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 5. Are you there? If you need a minute, say, I need a minute. All right, y'all all right? Let's go. I'm reading from the King James Version. You follow along in whatever version you may have. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Just for emphasis, verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. For the few moments that I always like to talk to you from the thought, get your mind right. Get your mind right. From time to time, I might ask you to say something to your neighbor, but this morning, I don't want you to talk to your neighbor. I want you to talk to yourself. So say, self, self. get your mind right. Get your mind. This morning, I'm going to start a series, Troy. Um, the totality of the series stays in line with our theme for the year, hashtag B. So the totality of the series really is be whole. W-H-O-L-E, behold, because I want to suggest this morning, I want to argue this morning that I believe we've got church down pretty good. We know how to have church. We even know how to preach to the things of our spirit and, and our soul. I'm concerned, though, that God isn't just interested in our spirit, but he wants us to be whole. We are three-dimensional. We are mind, body, and spirit. And so I believe in order to be effective for God, we've got to be a whole person. Somebody say a whole person. With that being, with that being said, we're going to start off uh, talking about the mind. For about the next two or three weeks, we're going to deal with the concept of mind. You understand that the mind is the holding place for thoughts, feelings, beliefs, intellect. That, that in the mind is where things uh, are formulated and believed. I, if I had time, I would argue the fact, Sister Mason, that um, before my body does anything, my mind first thought it. We, we, we spend a lot of time talking about and focusing on the flesh. But can I be honest with you and tell you, Diddy, that that if I don't have my mind right, I don't have to worry about my body at all. Do you think that as I take these steps right now, that it is my feet that are making the decision before my mind? I would argue that if my mind don't tell my feet to move, they won't go. So, so then the premise of this argument is simply this. I can't expect to get my life right until I get my mind right. There's nothing that will manifest in my doing until I first capture my thinking. 
See, we spend a lot of time focusing on the outward of what people are doing, but I want to argue for a little while, if we can get to the thinking, the doing will take care of itself. Right. Is that all right in here? Um, um, puts, me, puts me in this thought. I, 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 we, as a family, we decided we needed to get away for a couple days, and so, so we, were, we decided to go to the Northern Neck. We, we decided to go away, see some family, and and here's the truth about it, Charles. I knew what was waiting on me. I knew when I got there, there was going to be some fried oysters. I knew when I got there, there was going to be hot fish. I knew when I got there, my sister-in-law was going to have some red potatoes fried up in a pan. I knew when I got there that it was going to be like God's country with fresh cut grass. I could sit on the deck and watch the sun set like it was uh, somewhere in, in Augusta, Georgia. I knew what was waiting on me. I knew that there would be some strawberry. I didn't know there was going to be stra stra strawberry shortcake, but it was there. <laughs> Have mercy, Lord. What I did know was there was something good waiting on me. All right. Here was the problem. I still had to drive 103 miles to get there. Yeah. I still had to travel uh, uh, 295 to 64 to 33 to 3 to 3. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I knew what was waiting for me was good, but I still had to get there. If I had time, I'd tell you this, Shawan, and it wasn't just the physicality because I had a car that was capable of getting there, but it was, it was thinking about what was going to go on along the way. Because in my driving, I knew, Erna, I had no help. <laughs> People looking around, I don't know why they're looking around, I ain't calling no names. All I said was, I knew I had no help. I had passengers, but I had no help. Please don't miss it. There's something good waiting on me, but, but I couldn't focus on what was good until I got my mind right. Because if I wasn't careful, I would have forfeited the blessing worrying about the burden. Have you ever been there where there was something waiting on you, a breakthrough with your name on it, but you couldn't get to the blessing for worrying about the burden? I, I want to talk to somebody this morning that knows that God has something special for you, but before you can receive what God has, you got to first get your mind right. I don't have a lot of time. We got, we got to get to communion, so let me, let me jump right in here. Here's, here's really the premise of this argument, and I kind of I gave it up already, but please hear this. Your body nor flesh act without the okay of your mind. So you can't live right until you get your mind right. If I had, if I had, if I had, Deacon Mitchell, somebody in here that was worried about trying to shed a few pounds, I would say don't blame it on the plate. Don't, don't, don't blame it on the cook. We first have to make up in our... Can, can, I, can I say this? Can I say, as I, ha as I hasten along, can I say that the devil doesn't have to play with your flesh once he gets a hold of your mind? Talk real and I'm trying. See, we want to get real deep and spiritual with it, but, but the truth of the matter is that the battleground for our lives are not flesh and blood, but it's up here in the mind. So, so, so I hear you. you. You're telling me that I need to get my mind right. And, and, and we won't get into it this week, but, but I want to say this. For the next couple weeks, 
we're not only going to talk about the mind, but we're going to talk about mental health. We don't want to deal with that, especially not in the African-American community, because we don't have them kind of problems. Black folk don't have them problems that lie from the pit of hell. And here's the problem. If you were raised like I was raised in my house, when stuff went down, here's what you were told. Look here. What happened in this house? And that's cute, but, but the problem is, while we keeping it in the house, we're not dealing with the problems. I don't expect a whole lot of amens, right? That's all right. Because you were raised in the same kind of house I was. Didn't make it right. We got people that are struggling with chemical imbalances. We got people that are bound by challenges and hurts and pains that have never been dealt with. And they come and they put on a mask Sunday after Sunday and they know when to raise their hand and they know when to say hallelujah, but they're still suffering. And we so silly, we call them crazy. They're not crazy, they're hurting. And somebody's got to talk about it. Can I just talk about getting your mind right? Here we are, here we are, because the question would then be this, Maddox, if you tell me I need to get my mind right, how then do I get my mind right? Is that a fair question? Here's what I believe the text will help us. You understand that this is a letter, an epistle to the church at Philippi written by the Apostle Paul. Paul is writing this letter to help this church that is good, but is missing it in a couple places, but don't miss this. He's writing it to the church. He's not writing it to the world. He's writing it to the church. Which suggests if he says, get your mind right, he ain't talking to the world. He's talking to the church. He, he, he in the second chapter, starts to, to talk about interpersonal relationships. About how people are dealing with one another where? In the church. And Paul says, y'all getting it right, but there's some places where you're missing it. So here's how you can get it right, church. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Now here's the problem, Trey. Um, why would I want somebody else's mind? I mean, have you seen me? My mind is just fine. Or so we say. Any of us that are aspiring to greatness want to emulate those that we admire. When you say you want to be like Mike, do you really want to be like Mike? Will you shoot a thousand free throws? Will you be the first one to practice and the last one to leave practice? Do you really want to be like Mike? When you say you want to be like Kobe, do you have the mamba mentality that you'll kill anything in front of you? That, that, that's what it is to be like Kobe. But here's, here's the one I really want to talk about. Do you really want to be like Jesus? Yeah. I mean, I know you got a bracelet that says WWJD, but do you really want to be like Jesus? I know you got a cross that's giving you a, 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 a warped spine because it's so heavy. I, 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 know, I know you got bumper stickers that say it, but do you want to be like Jesus? Because if you do, Paul tells you, here's how you become like Jesus. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Well, well, what kind of mind did Jesus have? That's a good question, I'm glad y'all asked. Kathy, here's the first thing I believe the text shows us. Uh, Jesus had a mind of subjection. Somebody say subjection. Watch the text. Um, to be subject would suggest then that I am um, uh, a servant to something else. So Jesus had a subjective or a servant's mind. I ain't making it up. It's right here in the text. Watch verse 6. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of what kind of reputation? 
no reputation, and took upon him the form of a, and was made in the likeness of man. Rashonda, in short, here's what Paul says. Paul says, if you want to get your mind right, you've got to have a subjected mind, which would mean then, if I'm going to be like Jesus, I got to do what Jesus did. What did Jesus do? He, he thought it not robbery to take himself from equality with God, but to become lesser than God, even though in the triune, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, they are one. He steps down from his place of position and title. But if that wasn't enough, guess what he did? He stopped down from godness and put on flesh and became what he created. What kind of God will create and then become his creation? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Paul says, if you want to be like Jesus, do what Jesus did. Can, can, uh -huh. uh, for all of you pet lovers in here, um, for all of you dog and cat owners that walk them two, three, four, twelve times a day, imagine this. You love your, your pet. You love your cat. You love your parrot. You feed them. You water them. You even clean up after them. Here's the question. Do you want to be them? Can you imagine somebody putting a bowl out with some kibbles and bits in it? Can you imagine getting on your hand on all fours and lapping water where it falls all into your beard? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Because although you love it, you don't want to be it. Come here. Jesus thought so much of us that in his holiness he put on unholiness. In his sovereignty he puts on sin. Well, why would you do something like that, Jesus? Because if I don't come as the perfect substitution, then you can never find your way to eternal life. And all I'm trying to tell you is that Jesus teaches us that if we're going to get our mind right, I've got to put position and title and status and name and reputation and the letters behind my name and what school I went to and how many degrees I have. I've got to put all that aside and say, for God I'll live and for God I'll die. Whatever he needs, whenever he needs me, wherever I need to go, I will be subjected unto the Lord. That didn't get it for you, so let me say it this way. Deacon Artist, I, I knew I was coming to Union Branch, so, so in the original Greek text, um, there's a word called kenosis. That word kenosis means to empty out. So what Paul suggests is that Jesus emptied himself so that he could become us. Don't miss it. He lessened himself to become one of us. I didn't hit the right crowd yet, so let me come over here. Lethe, my Jesus, in order to save me, lessened himself to become me. And the reason that blesses me is because I know how faulted I am. So for a God that has no fault to put, okay, let me say it this way. I know you are accustomed to shopping in stores where all of the clothes have tags on them. That's because they're new. You wouldn't find yourself dead wearing somebody else's stuff. But Jesus stopped wearing new stuff and put on some worn stuff just so you and I. We probably won't shout today, that's all right. I'm going to teach till I'm happy. Here's the first way you get your mind right. You got to have a subjected mind. And could it be that part of the problem is we're a little too haughty in our thinking because us have arrived. 
We've become a little too full of ourselves and forgotten the sacrifices of those that came before us. We, 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 uh huh. Cracks me up. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes, if the service isn't right, if the food not right, you ought to send it back. But I'm so sick of bougie Negroes. I'm tired. I mean, you ain't never satisfied. Which means you probably should eat at home. But you know why I'm sick of them? Because I'm thinking about people that sat at lunch counters and were spat upon and had food thrown on them or had to come through the back door just to get in there. And now somebody lets you in the front door and you too bougie to even tip the waiter. I ain't mad, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Here's the second thing. You're gonna have, you're gonna have the mind of Christ if you're gonna get your mind right. Not only must you be subjected, but you must be submitted. That's a cuss word in church. I know, I know, I know. But, 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 I'm right here in the text. Kendra, watch what the Bible says. The Bible says, um, uh, but he made himself of no reputation and took upon the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of me. In verse 8, and being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. We, we must understand then and have context of who we're talking about. Th this isn't, this isn't Adam. This isn't Noah. This isn't Moses, it's not Joshua, it's not David, it's not Ezekiel, it's not Jeremiah. This is Jesus. This is the Son of God. This is Jesus who came through 40 and two generations. This is Jesus who John says in John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. That Jesus, guess what he did? He subjected himself to becoming a human and all he did while he was here was feed the hungry, clothe the naked, heal the sick, raise the dead. All he did while he was here was give hope to the hopeless. All he did while he was here was teach as one that had authority and for that, they picked Barabbas over him. For, for all that he did, <laughs> they, they sentenced him to death. Lee, I'm almost done, but I got to tell you about this death because, because when you really submit, you have the power to do something different, but you choose not to. See, it's not submission if you can't change it. But, but if you can change it and choose not to change it, that's called submission. Okay, let me talk in terms you might appreciate. Um, um, it would be different if you couldn't tell them about themselves. But you can. Because you have the right vernacular. You know all the colorful metaphors. And you even know some of their business. Y'all ain't going to help me today. <laughs> See, it would be different if you didn't know them. But the same juke joint that they hung out in is the same one you in. So it's not like you can't talk about it. But submission says, even though I could get you told, even though I could straighten you out, even though I could gossip about your business, I choose to take the mind of Christ who could have pulled himself off the cross, could have called a legion of angels to take him down, but he didn't. He died. Wait, he didn't just die. McCorvey, he died on the cross. A cross that the Roman government Outlawed. Teach me all, and I'm trying. The Romans didn't want to put Jesus on the cross 
Because they didn't believe in crucifixion. All right. It was the, wait for it, church that chose to hang him on an old rugged cross. The very ones that he subjected himself for. The very ones that he gave his life up for. Hung him on an old rugged cross. I feel Baptist on the first Sunday. They hung him high. Stretched him wide. He hung his head. And then he died. He submitted. Not unto them. But to the father. And I came to tell somebody. I know they talking about you. I know they lying on you. I know they dragging your name through the mud. I know they say it don't take all of that. But you don't submit to them. You're submitted to your father in heaven. I'm done. I don't have time. Larry, you're going to get your mind right. Listen, part of the reason why we have crazy now is because we're trying to please crazy folk. That make crazy trying to please crazy. If you're going to get your mind right, you've got to learn how to subject yourself to the things of God. If you're going to get your mind right, you've got to learn how to submit to the things of God. But can I tell you a secret? If you're willing for subjection and submission, you can experience elevation. I ain't flipping no pages. But the Bible says that this Jesus that was submitted to death on the cross, according to somewhere around verse 9 and 10, KJ, my Bible says, wherefore God has also highly exalted every name that at the name of Jesus every name should bow of things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the Father. If you're willing to take a step back, he'll help you take a step up. If you're willing to suffer for Christ, one of these days, and it won't be long. They'll look for you and you'll be gone. Don't worry about fixing them now. The Lord will make a way somehow. Do I have a witness? The battle is not yours, but it belongs to the Lord. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord in the land of the living. Where are the folk that are getting their mind right? I'm not looking to the left or the right, but I'm looking to the hills from which cometh my help, my help, my help, my help. coming from the Lord. Get your mind right. Get your mind right. You, you can't call yourself a Christian and not want to suffer. Come on. Because to be a Christian means to be Christ-like. Yeah. What did Christ do? He suffered. Quit crying so much. I know it hurts. But you built for this. You forward tough. We, we've got to learn that until we start thinking differently, we, we won't ever get any better. Can I show you how you can think in, in, a, in a 2018 example? Sister Branch, when they say things like, he was interviewed by the dumbest man 
in the world. And the dumbest man made him look smart, which is hard to do. You know what you do when you get your mind right? You do what LeBron did. Say nothing. This is bad English. Not because. Cause you look like an idiot too when you argue with an idiot. That's right, that's right. We around here losing our mind. What did you expect? <laughs> Maya Angelou said it best, I'm done. When they show you who they are, <laughs> believe it. This mind thing, Bible connects the mind and the heart. So if you're gonna think right, you got to have the right heart and you gotta have a heart for Christ if you're gonna ever get it right. If you're here and you've never accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you, you're not right yet. And I, and I really want you to hear me when I say this. It's not about it's not enough just to go to church. You got to have it in you. What is it? You got to have him, his spirit. If you're here and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, why don't you come? God, can I tell you? I can't promise you you won't have to subject yourself. I can't promise you you, can't, you won't have to submit yourself, but I can promise you he'll elevate you to heights no man can bring you down from. Is there one this morning 